Did you know that Collins Dictionary chose NFT as its 2021 word of the year? If that's not mainstream adoption, I'm not sure what is. While NFTs are gaining a lot of attention, many investors are scratching their heads over valuations. Is a virtual pet genuinely worth millions of dollars? Are NFTs in a speculative bubble or should we view NFTs as a revolution in art and technology? If you're curious about dabbling in NFTs, this video should help guide you through this confusing asset class. He started learning about NFTs. After reviewing the basics of NFTs, I'll explain a few strategies and considerations before investing in one of these crazy tokens. Good old Logan Paul held an NFT auction. For ownership of an NFT. Pulling up an NFT. What? NFTs are technically cryptocurrencies, but they're not the same as something like Bitcoin or Ethereum. The main difference between NFTs and other cryptos has to do with fungibility. I guess I said fungibility. NFT literally means non-fungible token. Unlike other cryptos, NFTs are non-duplicable digital assets. You can exchange an NFT one-to-one -one as you would maybe uh, currency or Bitcoin. The value of NFTs is determined similar to how collectors appraise sports cards, movie memorabilia, or original paintings. Since all these objects aren't identical, fungible, you can exchange them on a one-to-one -one basis. Okay, so that explains the uniqueness aspect of NFTs, but what exactly are they? Well, NFTs could be anything. Have you ever heard of NFTs? Most people are familiar with NFTs as works of art, but many other digital items are NFTs. For instance, metaverses like the Sandbox and Decentraland sell digital land or video game items as NFTs. Many artists and companies are experimenting with NFT albums, sports tickets, and video files. Down the line, it may be possible to use NFT technology for legal documents like deeds, patents, or wills. However, most of today's NFTs are digital collectibles. So how do NFTs work? NFTs are a genuine innovation as one of a kind digital assets. Like other cryptocurrencies, NFTs use blockchain technology to verify ownership and transaction history. Instead of recovering a certificate of authenticity, people who buy NFTs get a blockchain address that confirms their ownership. Creators publish their NFTs through a process known as minting. During this process, your digital image is added to an existing blockchain for a fee. Once an NFT is minted, the artist could then put their collectible for sale on a blockchain compatible marketplace. While some other sites allow you to buy NFTs with debit or credit cards, you typically have to use the digital asset associated with the host blockchain. So if you're on an Ethereum based site, you'd have to buy an NFT with Ether. Most of the hottest NFTs are on Ethereum, but other blockchains have built notable NFT marketplaces. For instance, NFT enthusiasts could find these digital assets on Solana, the Crypto.com chain, and the Binance Smart Chain. Now let's talk about how to invest in NFTs. Since most NFTs are digital artworks, value often resides in the eye of the beholder Getting an objective read on an NFT's value is incredibly difficult. However, there are features you should keep in mind as you assess an NFT's worth. The tips I'll be sharing should give you a blueprint for first-time NFT investing. Step one is to define your NFT investment strategy. Before you start surfing through OpenSea, you should clearly understand why you're getting into NFTs. Many people get into NFTs based on social media driven FOMO, but that's rarely a profitable investment strategy. Taking some time to develop an NFT game plan will help keep emotions out of your investment decisions. Your personal emotions out of it. First off, address your time horizon. Do you view your NFT as a long-term investment or are you only interested in buying and trading NFTs in a short time frame? If you're going the trading route, you should be familiar with navigating sites like Twitter and Discord to scout out promising NFT projects. Also, please remember to factor in any royalties 
and gas fees that could eat your profits. People who are more interested in minting their own NFTs must be tech savvy to succeed in this competitive landscape. Ideally, you should have numerous social media pages to help drive traffic to your NFT creations. While trading and minting your own NFTs is possible, it's usually too time consuming and risky for an average investors. So for most beginners, it's best to think of NFTs as either a long-term investment or a fun hobby. Since the NFT market is unpredictable, pleasure is a significant component when deciding which project to really buy. You wouldn't wanna buy a painting you didn't like, right? So two, you shouldn't invest in an NFT if you don't care about it. Instead, focusing on your NFT's ranking, please ask whether you'll regret holding the asset if it plummets in value. Ideally, even if your NFT loses its value, you won't feel so disappointed. If you're only interested in investing a small amount into this market, you may wanna research fractional F NFTs. As the name suggests, fractional NFTs are portions of a popular NFT. Since you're not buying the entire piece, it's usually more affordable than buying a full NFT. Lastly, please remember that many NFTs aren't digital art. For example, if you're into gaming, you shouldn't focus on NFTs that have value in upcoming projects, something like Axie Infinity, The Sandbox, and Decentraland. You could even purchase virtual land in metaverses and either rent it or sell it. As I'm sure you're aware, everyone gets into NFTs for different reasons. To help keep you focused, please establish your NFT investing goals before getting involved in this field. Step two is to perform market research on different NFT projects. Figuring out a fair price for an NFT may be impossible. However, some F NFT projects have become so dominant they've earned blue chip status. It's easy to track the trading volume on these popular projects on trusted websites like CoinGecko and CoinMarketCap. You can just click the NFT tab on the top of either of those sites to see how various NFTs are doing. While nothing is certain in crypto, blue chip NFTs retain their value better than other projects. For this reason, many investors view these NFTs as digital collectibles that will increase in value over time. A few of the most lucrative NFT projects include the following, Bored Ape Yacht Club, CryptoPunks, CryptoKitties, Pudgy Penguins, Mutant Ape Yacht Club. In addition to these blue chip NFT collections, many NFT projects are connected with real world brands, teams, and celebrities. For example, sites like NBA Top Shots, MLB Championships NFT, or Tom Brady's autograph sell pro sports memorabilia. Generally, it's easier to track the value of these assets because they already have an established fan base. Other NFT projects that are easy to track include metaverse games like Decentraland and The Sandbox. All these games have large followings and you could even view the performance of various assets on sites like OpenSea. For lower cap NFTs, you're gonna have to do more digging to figure out whether a collection is over or undervalued. NFT enthusiasts often use the site Rarity Tools to understand which traits are rarer than others. Typically, the rarer a particular trait is, the more value it has in the NFT collection. As you're researching different NFT projects, you can view the transaction history on the blockchain. Since all transactions are on immutable ledgers, it's public knowledge how much people have been willing to pay for various NFTs. Step three is to choose an NFT marketplace to open an account. After you've done your NFT research, it's time to pick an NFT marketplace. Yet again, there are dozens of NFT marketplaces you could choose, each of which has its pros and cons. However, Ethereum's OpenSea remains to be the best in the NFT marketplace space. Here you'll find some of the hottest NFT projects such as CryptoPunks and Bored Ape Yacht Club. OpenSea also sells valuable digital land for the Sandbox and Decentraland. Since OpenSea is an open NFT marketplace, anyone could join or mint their NFTs if they have an account. Rarible, Super Rare, Foundation, and Nifty Gateway are competing Ethereum-based NFT marketplaces similar to OpenSea. Some of the NFT projects on these sites overlap, but you'll have to explore each site to find an NFT that suits your preferences. For sports fans, many NFT platforms offer digital sports clips, memorabilia, and cards. The most popular of these platforms is NBA Top Shots, which is affiliated with CryptoKitties inventor Flow. 
People interested in buying fractions of NFTs could also look into the site Fractional Art. Here you could input the percentage of an NFT you want to purchase in terms of Ether. For those of you who don't really enjoy using Ethereum's blockchain, you could research NFT marketplaces on alternative chains like Solana, Tezos, and VeChain. While not as popular as Ethereum, these chains have lower gas fees. It's also worth mentioning that many big name exchanges have NFT marketplaces. For instance, there are NFT marketplaces on the Crypto.com chain and the Binance Smart chain. The American exchange Coinbase is also getting into the NFT game. As you're browsing all these potential markets, be sure to compare the average transaction fees and royalties on each platform. Step four is to create a compatible digital wallet. Once you've found the NFT marketplace that suits your needs, you must create a digital wallet that integrates with that website. Most NFT marketplaces integrate with the highly rated desktop wallet, MetaMask. You can download MetaMask for free as a browser extension at metamask.io. However, some sites may require different wallets to trade NFTs. For instance, anyone on a Solana marketplace will need a high quality compatible wallet like Phantom. Those on the Binance Smart Chain might feel more comfortable using Binance owned Trust Wallet. Whichever wallet you use, you must write down the seed phrase. After setting up your password, the seed phrase represents your private keys so you could use it to recover any precious NFT if it's on your computer and maybe your computer breaks down. Please write this seed phrase a few times on paper and place it in a fireproof safe. Step five is fund your digital wallet. Once your wallet is installed, you need to fill it with the currency used on your NFT marketplace. For most people, this means topping off your account with some ether. Also, please remember that you need more crypto than the stated price of your NFT. You're always going to have to pay gas fees and transaction fees before closing an NFT sale. It's not hard to find popular tokens like ether or Solana on centralized crypto exchanges. Whether you prefer using Coinbase, Gemini, or Crypto.com, you could purchase your preferred crypto and transfer it to your wallet address. After you have your crypto in your exchange, open the wallet you want to use to buy an NFT. Next, click the crypto you want and hit receive. Copy the address to your clipboard or keep the QR code open to scan. Next, open your exchange account and select the crypto you want to send. After clicking withdrawal, enter the amount you wish to send your external wallet and paste the address, double check the transaction fees before hitting the confirm button. Please remember to only send the same digital asset to your intended address. Crypto wallets can store multiple assets, but there's no master address for all tokens. For instance, you will lose Ethereum if you send it to a Bitcoin address. Always ensure you're sending the correct token to your external wallet's address. Step six is buy, bid, or make an offer on an NFT. Finally, it's time to use your crypto to buy an NFT. On most NFT sites, you'll see a tab at the top to connect your wallet. When you hit this button, you should see a list of supported wallets like MetaMask. Choose the wallet you wish to use and you will see it pop up in your browser. Now that your wallet is connected, it's pretty straightforward to buy or bid on an NFT. Find the project you want to purchase and click either buy now or bid. If your site has the option, you could click make an offer to see if the NFT holder will accept a lower price. For those buying an NFT, you'll have to confirm the transaction on your wallet. Before acquiring your NFT, you'll have to review the associated transaction and gas fees. Last, after you confirm the transaction, the NFT should appear in your marketplace account. Step seven is store your NFT in an external wallet. You don't have to transfer your NFT out of a marketplace, but it's always safer to store your NFT in an external wallet. Ideally, you should find a hardware wallet that supports your NFT's blockchain. For instance, Ledger devices could now connect with the popular Ethereum wallet, MetaMask, to secure NFTs. If you don't have a hardware wallet that accepts NFTs, you should look into compatible software wallets. As we just mentioned, you can store Ethereum-based NFTs on the MetaMask wallet. However, many other apps can secure NFTs. For example, Trust Wallet could store both Binance and Ethereum-based NFTs. The Crypto.com DeFi wallet could store Ethereum and Crypto.com NFTs. Lastly, Phantom is a top-rated choice 
for storing Solana-based NFTs. Though software wallets are better than leaving your NFTs on a marketplace, please remember that they are connected to the internet. So unlike a hardware device, there's a higher risk of a cyber attack. Now let's talk about some benefits of investing in NFTs. First and foremost, NFTs are fun. Sure, you could make a lot of money if you get the right NFT, but the point of these digital artworks is to admire and enjoy them. Fans of art, video games, or entertainment genuinely enjoy using and collecting NFTs. On the more practical side, NFTs provide owners with a reliable way to authenticate their collectibles. You don't need an appraiser to validate your art's authenticity. There's also a lower risk of theft since all transaction history is on the blockchain. Since NFTs are digital, you also don't have to worry about storing physical works in your home. NFTs don't degrade with age and you don't have to worry as much about breaking them. With your private seed phrase, you can always recover NFTs stored in your wallet. Now let's talk about the downfalls of investing in NFTs. Because NFTs are so new, they are one of the riskiest assets in cryptocurrency. Unlike coins that trade on the spot market, there's no clear way to assess the value of one NFT. You may not be able to liquidate an NFT at the price you want and there are no guarantees it will rise in value. Some critics speculate that the NFT marketplace is a giant bubble in truth, it really is unknown how valuable NFTs will be in a bear market. Will people flock to NFTs in bad times or will NFTs lose their value like Beanie Babies? Anyone interested in investing in NFTs must have a strong tolerance for risk, especially if they're buying at elevated prices. I hope you found value in this video. If you did, please smash the like button and don't forget to subscribe if you want more on NFTs or crypto, drop us a comment below and let us know specifically what you'd like to learn more about. I'm Sean and I'll see you in the next video.